The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives up even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A successful man known for his generosity was driving his new car through a poor part of town. A boy tried to flag him down. The man didn't want to get involved, so he pretended he didn't see the child. As he slowed for a red traffic light, he heard a loud crash. Someone had thrown a brick at his car, denting the trunk. The man stopped, jumped out of his car, and grabbed the boy that threw the brick. You juvenile delinquent, he yelled, you'll pay for this or go to jail. I'm sorry, mister, the boy cried. My mom's laying on the floor in our apartment. I think she's dying. Our phone's been cut off, and I've been trying for ten minutes to get someone to stop. I don't know what else to do. Take me to jail, but please call a doctor for my mom first. The man was filled with shame. I'm a doctor, he said, and asked, where is she? The boy told him, he took him to his mother, and the doctor administered CPR and called an ambulance. Will she live, the boy sobbed. Yes, son, she will, the doctor said. Then it's worth going to jail. I'm sorry I ruined your car, mister. You can take me in now. You're not going anywhere, the doctor said. It was my fault you had to throw a brick to get my attention. The doctor made sure the boy was taken care of and he drove home. He resolved not to fix the dent. He would keep it as a reminder that not everyone in need has a brick to throw. You know, God throws bricks and strikes us with two-by-fours to get our attention sometimes when we've been, become unconcerned and apathetic to the call of justice in our lives. Perhaps this is what's going on in the United States and the world today. Perhaps the brick throwers and the two-by-four wielders are the prophets and the righteous of our generation. Perhaps they are the real leaders of our nation by responding to the injustices. Perhaps they are the people of God now responding to hundreds of years of an American version of apartheid. When I was at seminary in Alexandria from 1983 to 1986, the world was focused on South Africa with apartheid as its motive operandi. We at Virginia Seminary had just heard a lecture from Bishop Desmond Tutu on the atrocities which were in place by white South Africans. So we seminarians and faculty alike would rotate going down to the South African Embassy at 3051 Massachusetts Avenue Northwest in D.C. We went there to protest. Part of that protest involved sitting in the street prohibiting access to the, the embassy. Of course, when laws are broken, time in jail is the consequence and should be expected. Remembering Henry David Thoreau's essay on civil disobedience, we sat down with our brothers and sisters from all over the nation. And yes, we were arrested with the charge of trespassing and unlawful assembly. The dean of the seminary bailed us out, but we had to come up with the money to pay back the seminary for the bail, 
and to show up for court or pay the fines as the required, at the required time. It was one of the hardest phone calls I had to make to our bishop during my whole tenure at seminary. But the bishop was good-natured as several of us from the Diocese of Southern Virginia were in the same pickle. Bishop Desmond Tutu, with whom I had the pleasure of meeting at Virginia Seminary almost 25 years ago again, has always had many wonderful words for, wor for the world, particularly in the 1980s and the 90s, as his country, South Africa, was dealing with the apartheid. A few of the things he said that resonated with me all these years are, if you want peace, you don't talk to your friends. You talk with your enemies. He also said that if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. While we abhor acts of destruction in our city streets and violence around the world, perhaps it is time to start looking at and acting with the small things that give people life. And finally, Tutu gave this simple piece of advice. Do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. What Jesus is telling us in reading from Matthew's Gospel is similar to the famous golden rule, do unto others. A cup of cold water is a gift that everyone can give, give it, and it's the smallest of gifts. And even this, the smallest of gifts, is precious to the person receiving it because it sometimes is the gift of life. Like the disciples who are sent out with Jesus' message, we're expected to tell the truth of God the truth of God's love and the Word of God through Christ's vision for life. We're to do this for everyone we meet because the recipient could be an angel, a prophet, or even Jesus in disguise. It can mean providing material support such as food, clothing, or shelter. It can also, also mean accepting the truth of unwelcome messages and finding light in the midst of darkness. We must be prepared to pay the costs, financial, personal, and danger. It's expensive to provide for living expenses. Our personal space and privacy are invaded. We could be caught in the opposition or persecution that the prophet would face. Jesus even said that hatred and persecution would get so bad that anyone who offered his sent ones a mere cup of cold water would receive a divine reward. Sometimes helping others requires even a bit of civil disobedience, a bit of sitting in the street to get our point across. But it has to be made without those acts of violence and damage to property, property if our voices are to be heard and taken seriously. Those who do God's work can be assured that those who help them will be rewarded. Doing God's work includes healing and those who are in the healthcare profession, as we have seen all over the country in this time of pandemic. They often leave personal comforts, such as family time, to care for the needs of others. When they care for the patients or residents of assisted living facilities or nursing homes, they show the love Jesus showed us when he lived among us. When we serve others, we serve Jesus, just like Jesus and his disciples served others. We are to show compassion for others by caring for the sick, comforting those who mourn. This is contrary to our me-first, selfish culture. It will loosen our hold on our possessions, our lives, and so on. But these small beginnings are the seed 
of a different kind of happiness. The happiness that only the Christian life provides. Even small gifts can make a big difference. It's a reminder of the old adage that big things come in small packages. To offer hospitality, care, and compassion, we simply have to bring who we are, what we have, and where we are. It requires attention to the person receiving the hospitality. We have to receive the person first before they can receive the benefit of the gift we offer. To Jesus, hospitality meant acceptance. Even those who in his society and day were deemed the, the unacceptable. That's why he put his arms around lepers, ate with tax collectors and sinners, forgave adulterers, and broke Sabbath laws. Hospitality was not only important to Jesus, it was the very heart of being God. And it didn't make any difference to him where such hospitality took place, or to whom, or on what day. When it comes to hospitality, we take turns being the host and being the guest. Sometimes we're the ones who simply need the hug or a cup of water and kindness comes. Other times we're the ones providing the hug or the cup of water. The little ones Jesus refers to are frequently the scapegoats or victims in our society and in the world. They are the powerless, the weak, the hurting, the abused, the abandoned, the elderly and children, and they are often the easiest targets for our wrath. They need the help and compassion that Jesus offers through us. When we help them, we have the power to bring others into a relationship with God, the power to show others God's love by showing them our love, the power to bring them face to face with God by bringing them face to face with us. Amen. Let us stand and say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son, our God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 